Hey, it's good to have you tonight. You ready to receive tonight? Amen. Amen. We've been talking about kingdom life, and uh, our our foundation scripture is Luke chapter 17, <clears throat> in verse 20. It says, and when he asked, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is on the inside. Amen? It works inside out not outside in. You know, the, the, the disciples, even when Jesus was about to leave, the first thing they asked him was, well, when are you going to establish your kingdom? He said, I'm not telling you. He said, but I am going to do one thing to help you. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you'll, be, you'll have power and you'll be witnesses unto me. So thank God the kingdom of God is inside of every believer. And it gives us a different way to live our lives. And so let me just ask you, do you see you living differently than the world lives? Or are you kind of just rolling along with everybody? Well, that's not a good place to roll. Amen. Amen. You don't want to live that kind of life. Um, God living in you means your life will look different as it's lived out in the world. There should be a difference. Not because you make it happen, but because you live it out. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm just running over, going back over this real quick, but, but there are really three kingdoms or rules or operations uh, on the earth. The, 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 the first one is the kingdom of God. Where is it? Thank you. Just checking. The second is the kingdom of Satan. And really, it talks about this, and I'm not going to get into this, but it talks about principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and wicked spirits in high places. There, there are lots of things working in this world that aren't God. Amen. There are lots of things working in this world that are not even the flesh. It's the devil. I'm, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight in regard to the kingdom. But, and then there's the kingdom of men. Those are the people you vote for or you didn't vote for and you're mad because they got elected, however you want to look at it, the way men operate on the earth. A lot of times they're motivated by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan, but they're, they're there. So the kingdom of God influences the other two kingdoms. By any, there's no, by any stretch of the imagination, the three kingdoms that I just mentioned are not equal. Okay? The kingdom of God is always going to in, influence the kingdom of men and even the kingdom of darkness. I read a thing that I thought was really, um, uh, really cute. Um, this lady put a, put a, um, uh, so I, I can't, I think she must have posted it on Facebook about, she said, I'm just praying for God, uh, to God for food. I just need food. I don't have any food. So this guy was going to mock her. And so he, <clears throat> he said, go buy her all the food. Just get her just a whole load of food. And when she gets it, tell her Satan brought it to her. So they, they took her all this food, you know, because he was going to mock God, took her all this food, and, and uh, the person that brought it to her said, don't you know where it came from? And she said, no, I don't need to know where it came from. Even Satan has to obey God. <laughs> Amen. So that's true. That's a real truth. Amen. <clears throat> so... Listen to what it says in John chapter 3, verse 3. This is going to be important tonight, so just hang in there and listen. Jesus said in John 3, 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you are born again, 
you cannot see the kingdom of God. It doesn't say unless you go to church three times a week or do certain religious activities, you're not going to see the kingdom. Unless you are born again, your eyes are blinded. You can't see. Now, you might feel a drawing or an urging or an an, an unction. I mean, I did before I got saved toward the things of God, but I couldn't see anything until I got saved. And I've told you the story. I mean, everything changed when I got saved. All of a sudden, I saw things in a whole different light. Not because I had to create that. It just happened. Why? Because I was born again. Amen. So be careful uh, uh, about understanding how the kingdom of God works. Uh, it works because you see it and you're, it, you're born of God and you see how it works from the inside out. Amen. So what I want to talk to you about tonight, and I, did, I was kind of going to do this last week, but ran out of time. But I want to talk to you about, about the parables uh, because they're, they're about the kingdom of God. Jesus gave us the character of the kingdom of God in parables. And my goal tonight is not to go into every parable in detail. My goal is for you to see how the kingdom works by these parables. So uh, go with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, and uh, let's read in verse 10, uh, and we'll start there. And I'm going to just kind of go down through Matthew 13, so just stick with me tonight. It says, the disciples came to Jesus and said, why do you speak to them, talking about the Pharisees, in parables? And Jesus said, because... Now listen, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. Now you know that sounds unfair, doesn't it? Jesus said, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm not giving it to them. Well, you're going to find out why they can't have it. It has nothing to do with the decision that God made. Okay, just hang with me, okay? Verse, verse 12 says, well, ver, let, let, me, let me back up here. Just so you, I want to reemphasize this. Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Good news. You can know the secrets right. of the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that good? All right, so listen to verse 12 out of the Amplified Bible. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will be more given, more be given. He will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. But for him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Explain that. Not don't have time to explain it. Okay? But just understand, you better hang on to what you've got and use what you've got. Yeah. Amen? Amen? All right? So now listen to what it says in verse 13. Now, Jesus is going to explain himself. This is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Because, now listen, Having the power of seeing, they do not see. Having the power of hearing, they do not hear. See, Jesus is not trying to withhold. They have the power to see. They have the power to hear. They're just not doing it. You got it? You today, as born-again children of God, have the power of seeing and the power of hearing. 
Now listen to me. I don't want to upset you tonight. Well, I just can't understand the Bible. Yes, you can. If all you do is just sit down for a few minutes and say, I'm going to read the Bible for a little while and nothing happens and you say, I don't understand this, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you pursue the Word of God, listen to me. If you pursue the Word of God, your eyes will pop open. Your ears will come in tune. And all of a sudden, things you didn't understand, well, you'll understand. I, I, I'll just tell this story. I've told it, you know, a number of times. But, but right before I got saved, I, I mean, I, you know, our, our, our friends, uh, Mary and Craig Giddens, were, were talking to us about the Lord and, and talking to us about going to church. And we were going to the first church. And sitting in the balcony as far away from the preacher as we could, we thought we could get away from God, you know, if we did that. Um, you can't, by the way. So those of you on the back row, it's not going to help. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, but I remember, I, I had, I, and I've told this story, but I had this Bible, you know, and, um, that was given to me by an old girlfriend. And so I, I got it out of the box and I opened it and I tried to read Hebrews. Now, you're talking about not making sense and all the blood and guts and cows that are killing. And all, that's all I could see is all the, I could, I could, I read it, but I didn't get it. Yeah. Why? Because I couldn't see it. Well, that was a night, that was a Wednesday night. Well, I went to church that next night on a Thursday night and I got saved. And I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I couldn't wait to get back home. Because I'm sitting, I still see myself sitting at my kitchen table, and I opened that Bible to Hebrews, and it made perfect sense. Nobody had to teach me. I understood. Now, I didn't know all the nuances of it, but to read it, I understood it. I understood who Jesus was. I understood, I understood what was happening. Why? Because my eyes were opened. You have the power of seeing. You have the power of hearing. You just have to activate it. I don't, don't get upset with me. And I'm probably not talking to anybody here, probably just somebody watching online. But, but listen, if you feel your ears all day with all the world wants to communicate with you. And then you go home and you turn on the TV and you listen to it for hours. And then you want to open your Bible and immediately hear from God. And you've been hearing everything else. You have to develop the power of, of seeing. and You have to develop the power of hearing in your life. And, and me preaching to you is good, but I want to tell you the greatest thing is when you see it and hear it for yourself. I'll tell you one of the greatest things to me when I was a new baby Christian, I remember I was in a meeting and uh, it was at Lakewood and, and uh, I had been studying one particular area in the Bible and I saw something by the Spirit of God. I just, it just jumped out at me and said, man, that's really good. And I went to church that night, and Brother Copeland was preaching. And he said the same thing. I just grinned and said, I already got that. <laughs> it was good to know somebody else saw something, but you'd already seen it. I would love for you to say, Pastor, I've been reading that same parable, and I already know that. I got that. Praise God. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean we don't need teachers or God wouldn't have given us teachers. He gave us pastors because you need a pastor. Amen. So, so you have the power of seeing and hearing. You, you understand that. You don't have to get that power. You have it. It's just a matter of you allowing it to work in your life. Because to be honest with you, a lot of people just go by what they hear somebody else say. That's not the power of hearing. The power of hearing is when you hear it for yourself. You see it for yourself. 
Now, you may get that from a word somebody communicates to you, but if you're just pantomiming or, or speaking something that somebody, uh, mimicking what somebody else said, that's different. You got to get it for you. Got to get it for yourself. Amen. Amen. I mean, listen. There are multiple books I've read, you know, on certain subjects, but I had to. I had to invest my time to hear it for myself and see it for myself. I got it out of the book, but I still had to see it myself and still had to hear it myself for myself. Amen. So, so again, you have the power of seeing. In hearing. Amen? You have it. They had the power of hearing and they didn't hear. They didn't grasp it and they didn't understand it. Doesn't mean you can't, you can. Now listen, I'm talking about the simple, pure Word of God. I'm not talking about some deep revelation. I mean, I've heard some people talk, deal, talk about revelations they've gotten from the Word, and I'm sitting there looking at it like this, and I'll go home and read it in the Bible. And, it, and, and, and I mean, I'm a mature Christian now, okay? So I know what I'm doing. Now, I'm not there yet, but I know what I'm doing. And I know when something is a revelation from God, and it's somebody's own revelation, and not only that, I will tell you, if you ask me, what do you think about this? I will tell you. Maybe. But, but really, I'm serious. But the point is, you can grasp, you can understand, you can hear, you can see. Well, that's just above me. Well, if it's above you, then it's not of the kingdom. Because the kingdom's in you. Amen. All right, so listen to verse 13, and this will explain it. It's talking about the children of Israel. This nation's heart has grown gross, fat, and dull. You know, Hebrews warns about your, your, your hearing and that you don't go dull of hearing. That's on you. It's not my fault. It's not the way I'm communicating. Amen. I, I'm not trying to protect myself or defend myself. I'm just telling you, you've got to hold that mirror up and say, wait a minute. Okay, so listen to what it says. For the, this nation's heart has grown gross, fat, and dull. Their ears heavy and difficult of hearing. Their eyes they have tightly closed. Lest they see and perceive with their eyes and hear and comprehend the sense with their ears and grasp and understand their heart and I should turn and heal them. God's just waiting on us. Yes. Open your eyes to the things of God. Well, I just don't believe that. Well, you better wait before you say something like that. You better wait. Because there'll come a time if it's the Word of God and you're talking about, well, I know they believe that, but I just don't believe that. Well, wait a minute. Why don't you believe it? Well, I just don't believe it. Well, you know what you just did? You just closed your eyes. Now, I'm not talking about some fanciful thing that somebody comes up with. I'm talking about the basic Word of God. I mean, I went to church as an unbeliever because somebody told me that they laid hands on people at that church and they fell down under the power of God. You know what, my, what I said? I don't believe that. My eyes were closed. My eyes were closed. You can close your eyes to lots of things that God wants to do in your life because you were taught that way. There are things, listen, there was a time back in, I'm not getting very far tonight, but it's okay. There was a time, there was a time back in, in the 90s that we had in, in this church on a Sunday morning, we had the Spirit of God move in, in a, a, a very unusual way. Not hadn't happened at all like that in any way. I'm sitting in my study at home, and the Lord, the Lord clearly spoke to me and said, my people are thirsty and they need a drink. 
gave me a scripture over in John chapter 7. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. I just got up in church. Now, there was more to it than that. I don't want to get into that. But I, I just got up in church and just shared that. And I said, <clears throat> if, we were having two services then. I said, if, if, if anybody's thir thirsty and needs a drink, just come up here. First service. I think, I don't know if everybody came, but I think almost everybody came to the front. And the Holy Spirit fell. Now listen, people started falling out laughing. <coughs> laughing. <coughs> Joyful. Hilarious. Joy. It took me back. I, now I had had that happen to me once before, a number of years before, Unfortunately, I was at somebody else's church and I think I embarrassed them and me and everybody else. But, but, but actually, it had to happen twice in my, in my whole ministry. <clears throat> so finally, we got everybody from the first service out and the second service came in. Same thing happened. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God started moving in our church in a different way, and there was a joy and a laughter there that, that went for, for several years. It was fun. It was, it was a fun time. But I had a pastor friend, and I'm not going to name him, but he just didn't believe in all that. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe people have to fall out. I don't believe in it. And he's a spirit-filled guy, but he just... Didn't believe any of that until he did. I mean, the Holy Spirit turned him upside down. It, it, was, it was so much fun watching him. So you can open your eyes if you want to. Well, you're already over my head. Listen, just keep your ears and your eyes open. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life. You'd be amazed at what God can do. I don't, listen, I, don't, I think we're on the precipice uh, and, uh, of something, something different. I'm not trying to make anything happen, not even trying to create some, something different the Holy Spirit's about to do, and I believe it's going to rock the world. Yeah, I do. I, I don't know. When? I don't know. I just know it's coming. But, but listen, there'll be people that, I don't believe that. There'll be people that stand up and fight it and fuss about it and don't want to be a part of it, don't want anything new with it. Till they do. Because, listen, don't be dull. Don't be, you've got to keep your senses your ears and your eyes open, your heart open. Why? Because that's the way the kingdom of God operates and, and the way God works. And if you think you've, you've got, I, I get so tired of listening to people talk about, they think they know it all. They got it all. They know, they know the right thing and this is it and this is it. Yeah, it is maybe today, but what about tomorrow? Because you don't want to get closed off. You don't want to get closed off. I, I don't. Amen. Because the kingdom of God works in lots of, lots of different ways. Amen. So listen to Matthew chapter 13, verse, verse um, um, 16 and 17. Listen to what Jesus said. Blessed are you, your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. Blessed are you. You're blessed today. Because you can hear. You can see. You don't want to go around writing books about what you isn't real when it, it's already proven it is. You just don't want to be, you want to keep your ears, eyes closed, your ears shut. Now be blessed. Be blessed that God can do more. God wants to do more. Amen? 
Listen to what Jesus said in verse 17. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it and hear what you hear and did not hear it. Now listen to me. I, I want to tell you something. As a believer, even if you're a, don't get offended by this, a novice or a nominal believer, maybe you just showed up at church for the first time tonight in 10 years. You have more revelation than the prophets of old had because they had no clue what they were talking about. They, they said it, but they had no clue what they were talking about. They desired to see what you see, and they didn't see it. To hear what you hear, and they didn't hear it. Do you know, do you know that you probably have more revelation than many of the early church scholars Just plain, basic revelation. I'm not talking about anything. You, you ought to go read some of the things that they thought in those days. That, that just, it wasn't true. It wasn't truth. It was a speculation. But, but you, you, know, you know the just shall live by faith. You ever heard that phrase? Do you understand that that phrase up until the 1700s, lost. Nobody understood that. They thought you had to do stuff. My, my friends, Pastor Mark and Janet Brzee, they're in Rome right now, and sent this picture of these people at one of the Roman basilicas over there climbing up the stairs on their knees trying to do penance for God to work in their lives. Still going on today. You know why it's going on? Because they won't open their eyes. But one man, Martin Luther, read that scripture and his eyes were opened. And it was a foundation of where we are today. The just shall live by faith. Do you, do you know that, that the prophets of old said it, Habakkuk said it, and didn't even know what he was saying? I'm sure he had some knowledge, but not, not of what he was saying. Let me read you a scripture over 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Talking about our salvation. Of this salvation... The prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied, listen to this, of the grace that would come to you. Okay, they prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Now listen to what it says in the next verse. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories, I like this, and the glories that would follow. And the glories that would follow. Okay, now listen. Listen to the next verse. To them it was revealed. They got a revelation. You know what that revelation was? Listen. That not themselves but us. They were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. That's you. Open your eyes. We get so confounded by our world in our circumstances, in our situations in life that we can't see the glories that are belong to us. The things that God wants to do in our lives. All you got to do is open your eyes. Well, is there a book about that? There sure is. It's called the Bible. 
B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Well, I don't know how to study the Bible. Listen, there are lots of books that can help you read the Bible and go in some kind of an order or some kind of a manner, but it's not going to do any good if you don't read it. And then you can study. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to study subjects. I mean, I, I just have to tell you, I, 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 I thank God that I, was, I, was, I did not have to fight my way out of unbelief when I got saved. That when I got saved, I was in a church that believed the Bible. They didn't, they didn't argue against the Bible. They didn't tell you this isn't for today or this isn't for today. They said, if it's in the Bible, let's believe it. Let's believe what God said. Let's believe what Jesus said. And let's just hold on to the word of God. Amen. Most people want to argue against what the Bible says because it's not being manifested in their lives. Well, there are lots of things that I'm not having manifest the way I want, but I'm not going to quit believing. Because the Bible's the truth, not me. I'm not going to write a book like I'm the truth. And I can prove. I had a, I had a denominational guy get so mad at me, I, I was on an airplane with him, but he couldn't leave. <laughs> Sitting next to him. And he believed that you had to, you had to uh, be baptized in water to be saved. Now look, I, you know we believe in baptism around here. And I believe it does awesome things for our lives. But our salvation comes by faith. And that's a demonstration of our faith. Just like with Abraham, the Bible says he was justified by faith, but then he was circumcised. Same thing, water baptism is a New Testament picture of that, okay? But I mean, no, he, he was saying, so I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, can you, um, and I wasn't being ugly or arguing with him, I was just asking him. In fact, I think he thought he had me leaning toward his way. And I said, well, let me ask you this. Over there in the Bible, it talks about Paul, and um, it says that he, he was... Um, talking to some people that um, had been baptized with John's baptism. He said, oh, no, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. And I said, okay, I know. I understand. I said, but when he was talking to them, they all got filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you get filled with the Spirit before you're saved? No. Well, they did. And then Paul said, well, I guess we better baptize them. What about that? He closed his Bible and wouldn't speak to me the rest of the trip. You know why? Because his eyes were closed. That, was, that would have been a simple moment in his life where he could have, could have said, you know what? That's in the Bible, isn't it? And it's not the only time that happened, by the way. Right. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking against water baptism. Same thing with how, how you're baptized. Don't know why I'm talking about this, but how you're baptized. Well, you need to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Well, it also says, Peter said, be baptized in the name of Jesus. I mean, people argue about that. So I don't know whether you notice or not, but when I baptize you, I mean, have you been baptized lately? When I baptize you, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by the authority and in the name of Jesus. We got it covered. <laughs> I, I've told this before, but we, we, I had some friends that, got, got, that I baptized them in the river and they got kicked out of their church because it was a foreign baptism. Don't close your eyes. Maybe there's somebody watching tonight online. They're sneaking online. You know, you can <laughs> do that. Don't close your eyes to what God can do in your life. 
And, 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 and especially if, if the devil is telling you your circumstances are contrary to that. <clears throat> what do you mean, Pastor? Well, you know, you may, be, you may be sick and believing for healing. You know, and it, maybe it's getting worse. Well, don't quit. Don't give up. Maybe there, there are all sorts of things that don't ever quit giving, believing. It, it's a, your time and God's time just don't seem to match. But our, our, our place is to be believers. Keep our eyes open. Keep our ears open. Amen. So let me, let me uh, jump back over here. I, I, and I'll, I'll try to connect one more here before we're through. But all right, Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> and I, I'm going to jump over to verse 18. Now, listen to what it says here. Jesus said in verse 18, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Okay, now I'm just going to read this part to you so you can, can understand this. Jesus is, is explaining it, okay? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches what was sown in his So if it was in his heart, it could stay. It got stolen, not because the devil was able to take something out of your heart, but because you let it go out of your heart. Again, I don't want to get into detail with this, but, but that's, that's, it says, this is he who receives seed by the wayside. All right, now listen to verse 20. He who received the seed on a stony place is he who, here it is, hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in himself and endures only for a while. And when tribulation and persecution arises, because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Okay, that's a kingdom principle. And it's not one you want to rejoice over. But when you receive the word, the devil's going to try to steal it. You need to be aware of that. I, I was shocked when I first got saved and, and started... Um, hearing the Word of God and got all excited about it and expecting things to happen, and it like all hell broke loose. And I said, wait a minute. What did I do? I was a baby Christian. Man, I read that, and I realized that's a devil. That's a devil trying to steal from me. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So, it's our responsibility not to back down or quit or give up when that happens. Devil, you're not stealing this from me. Amen. I'm hearing, I'm seeing, and I'm believing. And I'm not going to quit. And I'm not going to give up. Now listen. To this. Now he who receives the word among thorns is he who hears the word. And I believe this is a lot of people in, the, in, in our in America, to be honest with you. He receives the word among thorns and he and is he who hears the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, chokes the word and he becomes unfruitful. Isn't it interesting? It chokes it. It doesn't steal it. Listen, as a pastor... I've seen people struggling in their lives and I'll try to talk to them and they'll look me straight in the face and say, I know the Bible. I know what the Word says. You know what's happened? It's choked off. It's choked off in their lives. This is a kingdom operation. What I'm telling you, this is the way the kingdom works. And it all works around the Word of the kingdom. 
So, so don't, don't be upset about it. Don't, don't get choked off. Most of the time you can identify people like this and you, if you're one of them, you'll know. You know the word, but you're not doing it. You're not, it's not working. Okay. Nobody here I know, but anyway. I have to say it. But he who receives seed on good ground, now here's the whole premise of this whole parable, okay? Who hears the word and understands it. His eyes are open. His ears are open. And he bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. So that's a kingdom parable. This is, what, this is how the kingdom works. So wherever you are in your life, go read this. This is how it works. This is how it works. When you're hearing the word, this is how it works. So you have to fight through to the end, to where it's producing fruit in your life. Don't get choked off. Don't let tribulation and trouble come against you and don't let the devil steal it. You can hear a word today and walk out those doors and automatically something happens and you say, oh my God, I thought, wait a minute, just give us some time. I mean, I've had to... I, I recognize it. When you start walking in the kingdom, you recognize it. I mean, it's almost instantaneous. You know, boom, there it is. I know what that is. Why? Because you're walking in the kingdom. Your eyes are open. Your ears are open. I'm not going to let the devil steal that from me. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Let, let me give you one more, verse. this, this next one, and then we're going to... Close. This is a kingdom principle, and this might answer some questions for you, okay? Verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And I'm not going to read all of this part of it, okay? I'm going to just tell you this. And it says that some, while he slept, an enemy came and sowed uh, tares with the wheat. In Louisiana, we'd call that Johnson grass. <laughs> okay. Tares with the wheat. And it sprouted up. So the servant said, do you want me to go pull up the good, uh, the good seed? Or, I mean, pull the tares up? And he said, no, leave it alone. Uh, at the harvest, we'll take care of it. All right, so Jesus explained this in verse 36. Okay? It says, Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. And he answered and said to them, Now listen, this is so clear. This is a kingdom operation. This is where we are today. In society. Okay, listen. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. We're that seed. If you be in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. That's us. Okay? The field is the world. You live in the world? Nah, don't be spiritual with me. <laughs> Just say yes, because it's true. Okay? The good seed are the sons of the kingdom. Good seed. We're good seed. Sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked. Listen, I don't know whether you know what this know this or not. But there's a lot of bad seeds in the world. Wicked stuff going on in the world. And we've got some people have created this Christian philosophy that, that well, God loves everybody. Jesus said there are wicked people. 
They're, they're wicked. And they're going to be wicked to the end. But what about so-and-so? Well, I don't know about them. You better pray for them. They're not destined to be wicked to the end. That's why Jesus came. But the point is, listen to me, this is our world. We, we are wheat among tares. I don't understand why people treat me like this. Well, that's because you're wheat and they're tear. Well, they just treat me so bad and I don't even know why. Well, probably because they pick up a good spirit on the inside of you and that's a good thing. That bothered me when I first got saved. I went and told all my friends what happened to me. Man, I thought they'd just be excited and they just, immediately, I was not a friend anymore. Why? Because they're wicked. Now, some of them have changed, but they're wicked. Well, you shouldn't talk about people like that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I'm not pointing my finger at anybody. Okay? And listen, you can be wicked and be nice. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> the devil knows how to produce a good personality, by the way. If you don't believe it, go watch TV or watch Hollywood. And, okay, I better move on. Okay, listen. Listen to verse, verse 30. 39, the enemy who has sowed the wicked ones is the devil. So we talk, Jesus is talking about in this world that we live, there are wicked and there is a devil. There are wicked and there is a devil. And you have to be careful. We had a couple that were in our church for a long time. They weren't, when this happened, they'd actually gone, gone somewhere else. But um, they picked up somebody, a vagrant, yeah. to help him. Yeah. That vagrant was wicked. Well, he just needed a little help. No, he was wicked. He killed them and burned them. That's wicked. They're, they're in the world. They're in, our, they're in the world. So you have to understand that. We're living in a world with wicked people. Well, I don't like that kind of talk. Well, I'm just telling you. That word means to be hurtful and be of an evil influence. And it's part of their character. It indicates degeneracy. I don't even want to read all of it. Bad, evil, you, you can't get away from it. Okay, Jesus said this is the way the kingdom is. We're in a world. We're kids, sons of the kingdom. But in that same world, there's another world of wicked. Okay. So... The enemy who sowed them is who? The devil. See, I was part of that group. I, I was in that world. I was, I was under that influence. It says over in Ephesians uh, chapter 2 that he, uh, he said, He made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were wicked. In which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Yeah, that's the devil, okay? The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So you need to know that. You're living in a world that has that operation working all the time. And it says, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves. Okay? So that we used to, I used to be a part of that. Good news is I'm a good seed now. Because I made Jesus the Lord of my life. Amen? 
It's not like God just planted a certain group of people. No, he planted the seed. He's the seed. And when you receive him, you're, you become the seed. Amen? So, you go back over there to verse 39. The enemy sowed them as the devil. Okay? The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. This thing's going to get wild at the end. Okay? Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. So between now and then, the wicked only have two choices. They either need to make Jesus the Lord of their life and become the seed of Abraham, or they're going to burn. That, that's not very pleasant, is it? But that is the way the kingdom works. Jesus lined it out for us. This is the way it works. This is how it operates. So you've, you've got to understand that. So it says, the Son of Man will send out his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and cast them into the furnace of fire and there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Woohoo! I don't wish that on anybody. But there's an out. Yes. Jesus is that out. Yes. Now listen to this. Then... Once the tares are gone, the righteous will shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father. You ready for this? He who has ears, let him hear. Did you notice there are no daisies? There are no other flowers. There are no other, other grain. There, there's either wheat or tares. There's no middle ground. Okay. God is not, listen, God is not choosing the wheat and, okay, he's sowing the wheat. That's what his son did when he was buried. It says he was sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. Why? So that we could be raised in incorruption. So when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you step over into the kingdom. And not only do you step over in the kingdom, you start seeing and hearing. You have the power of seeing and you have the power of hearing. Amen? Hallelujah. Did y'all get anything out of this? Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight. We worship you. We glorify you. Father, I just thank you right now for the revelation of the power of your kingdom and how we can relate to the world. How we can walk in love, live the life of a lover according to your kingdom principles, but also beware of the wicked. Thank you, Lord, that you can use us in your kingdom to affect the kingdom of men in the kingdom of darkness. And I thank you that we have ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, stand up with me. Amen. Turn around, hug somebody, tell them that you love them. You're dismissed.